Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to News Dose, and we actually got some more Xbox news today. Like I said yesterday, they're really the only platform holder that's actually communicating their plans. I know, what a thought, right? But uh, for whatever reason, Nintendo and PlayStation are just dead silent right now. But if you have an Xbox, you have a lot to look forward to. They just announced a significant update for one of last year's biggest games being Starfield, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised by what it has to offer, especially with one specific inclusion. So we are going to talk about all of that, as well as a leak for their 2024 lineup. It looks absolutely stacked for them right now, and I mean, just overall, that Xbox showcase is sounding very interesting, so do stay tuned for all of that. Then also, kind of a bizarre PlayStation story that seemingly has sparked some remake rumors whether we actually need a remake for this game is up for debate but based on what's going on it seems like it's highly possible before we get started though a lot of you still haven't subscribed so do make sure to hit that button below that way every time i post one of these videos you'll be notified just like that with that said though you know it Let's just go and jump right into things, starting off with Square Enix. I actually really like Square Enix. I don't always necessarily agree with their decisions in terms of a business, and I've talked a lot about that in the past because it is something that I genuinely do care about. You know, they handle a lot of my favorite games, whether that be something like Final Fantasy, whether that be something like Kingdom Hearts, The World Ends With You, or even the various Team Asano games like Bravely Default as one such example. So this isn't the news that I'd like to bring today but this is a big and very important story they just announced that they canceled a number of hd games which more or less seems to mean console and pc games you can see their statement here which reads at the meeting convened on march 27th of 2024 the board of directors of square enix holdings voted in the light of myriad changes underway in the environment surrounded in the group to revise the group's approach to the development of high definition games with the intention of being more selective and focused in the allocation of development resources as a result of a close examination of the group's development pipeline undertaken in keeping with this revised approach, the company expects to recognize approximately 22.1 billion yen in content abandonment losses on its books for the fiscal year ended March 2024. So, you know, this is basically a warning to their investors saying, hey, the numbers are not going to look good for their financial report because they've decided to abandon various different projects that were in development. Now, we don't know what those games are. They're not saying that currently, but from the way this reads, it's going to be smaller, less recognized games, games that they might consider a little bit more risky. Instead, they want to focus their investments on bigger and more established titles. So, you know, games like Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, and Kingdom Hearts, those games seem fairly safe here. Now, hopefully these cancellations didn't impact Team Asano because, you know, to me, I think they've been a bright spot for them, but I think we're going to see them experiment a lot less on games like Dealfield and Valkyrie Elysium. Square Enix from this point forward will be more selective with their output, which could mean Two different things. On the more positive side of things, this could mean quality over quantity. Uh, but then on the other side, it also could mean that they'll just take less chances. Now, we also got a really bizarre update from PlayStation. And I, I mean, when you first see this, it kind of throws you for a loop or, you know, at least until you start to actually think about it. So what I'm talking about here is that Sony is removing their own first party game from PlayStation Plus Extra on May 21st. This is for Horizon Zero Dawn Definitive Edition. And again, when you first hear that, you're just kind of like, what are you doing, Sony? This is absolutely ridiculous. PlayStation owns this game. They have full control of where it can be, so why in the world are they taking it out of their subscription service? That's like taking a benefit away from consumers. Well, that's kind of the thing about all this, because we've seen something like this happen before. Last year on May 15th, and this is an important date, I'll come back to that in just a moment, but they removed Spider-Man from PlayStation Plus. Now, you might ask, well, Jay Wood, what's so significant about this date? 
Well, interestingly, this was less than 10 days before their 2023 PlayStation Showcase, where they revealed a lengthy segment of Spider-Man 2. Now we can talk about the crooks of PlayStation's plans here. Last year, they removed Spider-Man just ahead of that showcase because they knew the Spider-Man 2 trailer was going to shake some newfound interest for the Spider-Man franchise. Maybe so much so that some fans would go back and purchase the first game. I mean, we're seeing that right now with the Fallout franchise. Hype will translate to purchases for older games. So Sony's logic was basically, let's go ahead and remove Spider-Man from PlayStation Plus and funnel any new interest into a full-blown purchase. Well, it's very interesting that here we are once again, one year later in the month of May, just before the PlayStation Showcase and Horizon Zero Dawn, another first-party game is suddenly being removed from PlayStation Plus once again so is there a reason why and well yes based on leaks there has been a lot of discussion for a horizon zero dawn remaster slash remake allegedly it's been in development for quite a while and it could actually release relatively soon so this new edition could maybe be announced at this upcoming showcase and if this is true now this is still an if but if so sony probably doesn't want fans to play the original on playstation plus instead just like spider-man last year they want to funnel new interest to purchases for preferably the remake slash remaster I mean, that's kind of one issue that Sony will have by remastering a game like this. Horizon Zero Dawn is already playable on the PlayStation 5 because it's only a 7-year-old PlayStation 4 game. And one that still looks great to this day. So, I mean, it's already debatable as is on whether or not this game deserves a remaster in the first place. I mean, I guess if anything here, uh, that's really where it's going to be interesting to see how Sony prices this, again, remaster slash remake. We still don't know which one it is. But assuming that this is a real thing, it will be interesting to see how they price it. Will it be a $10 upgrade for people who already owns the original? That would be preferable. Uh, or is this going to be in line with The Last of Us Part 1, where Sony tried to sell it for a whopping $70? So, I mean, we'll see here soon enough again if any of this is true, and, you know, if so, we'll see how Sony approaches this situation. It will be quite interesting considering it's not really a remake that people have been asking for. Okay, so let's go and talk about Xbox, though, because they have their own showcase on June 9th, and from everything that's coming out, this is going to be a fairly big showcase. Now, I will say, even though everything is pointing towards a big showcase, I still encourage fans to kind of go in with tempered expectations just because we've heard all of this before. Every single year, these showcases gets hyped up beyond belief, and they don't always meet everybody's expectations. So kind of keep that in mind over the next month or so as these rumors continue to roll out. Uh, but nonetheless, according to Tom Warren over on The Verge, he leaked some of their lineup for 2024, and it sounds pretty impressive on paper. Now, there could be some surprises along the way, and you always do have to keep Game Pass in mind as well, with games like Stalker 2 as one such example. That is a major game for them. But according to Tom Warren, Xbox has five major releases planned across a four-month period this starts in the month of September. The first game will be Starfield's DLC, Shattered Space, which is targeting a September release, and we'll talk more about Starfield here in just a moment. But that DLC will then be followed up in October with the next Call of Duty. Now, this is going to be the first Call of Duty under the Xbox umbrella, and it's going to be very interesting to see if this includes a day one Xbox Game Pass release, because if it does, that is a true game changer for the Xbox brand and for Xbox Game Pass. I mean, Talk about a chance to bring in an influx of new players to those Game Pass subscriptions. Here it is. Now, we still need that confirmation, though, and that is something to watch out for at the June Xbox Showcase. Nonetheless, though, after that, we could see both Avowed and Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 in November. Now, these might not carry the same weight as some of these other titles, but they are still incredibly exciting games for the Xbox ecosystem. And definitely for me personally, Avowed is one of the more interesting Xbox games this year, in my opinion. I mean, if you like RPGs, then Obsidian, you know, they just know how to make good games, and hopefully they'll prove that once again with Avowed. Lastly, though, in December, and here's their big-time exclusive, 
Indiana Jones appears to be targeting that December month. Now, you do also have to kind of keep in mind that they have other games planned for this year, like Towerborn. They also have the Diablo 4 expansion. There's Age of Mythology and Aura History Untold. So if they can actually pull all this off, you know, this really will be a major holiday for Xbox this year. In kind of a sneaky way, they might actually have the best holiday lineup this year, unless, you know, PlayStation and Nintendo has something up their sleeves as well. We'll see about all of that when they eventually decide to communicate with fans. Uh, but in the meantime, depending on the quality, Xbox seems to be delivering the goods this year. The really interesting thing, though, is that the Xbox Showcase is going to have more games than the ones that I just mentioned. Tom Warren also said that Microsoft is supposed to have a lot of games to show this year, more than the 2023 showcase. We should expect to hear how the 2025 lineup is looking, with some launch dates for some anticipated Xbox games. So this really opens up that showcase for some 2025 reveals as well. You know, games like Fable, Perfect Dark, and State of Decay 3 all immediately comes to mind here. We could finally get some updates for some of those games, including the next Gears of War. We've heard a lot about that, and there could potentially be some more surprises as well. We still don't know what Double Fine has been up to. Their last game was Psychonauts 2 back in 2021. What else have they been cooking up since then? There's also id Software. It's been rumored for a while that they have a new Quake in development. Could we possibly hear about that? That would be pretty interesting. There's even rumors for a new Banjo-Kazooie, and I know we hear those rumors every single year, but as a Banjo fan that's been waiting for a very, very long time, I want that hope. Don't ruin it for me. But yes, there's a lot of potential for this showcase. Really, Xbox is just such a ginormous brand now with Bethesda, Activision, and Blizzard all under the same umbrella. And it's going to be very interesting to see how they put all of them together to make not one, but two big showcases on June 9th. Now, Starfield. Bethesda and Xbox released this game last year, and while I think this is a good, solid game, maybe not the game of the generation as some people hyped it up to be, but it is a good, solid game, and, you know, that's kind of the thing for me, because I think there's potential for it to be more than just that. They just need to add the right things. Listen to some of the genuine feedback and improve it over time. Well, Bethesda is doing exactly that. They just announced its biggest update ever, and it'll be out on May 15th. So, I mean, we're talking about right around the corner, and this will include improved surface maps, new difficulty options, more ship customization, respect for characters, land vehicles are confirmed for later on, that's a big one, and then also the creation kit will go out to beta testers as well. Now, there's a lot more than just that, but the big inclusion, and personally, this is the game changer for me, there will be more performance options. Yep, you can see here they said you can now choose between 30, 40, 60, or an uncapped frame rate on VRR displays. If you do not have a VRR display running at 120 hertz, you will still be able to select from 30 or 60 frames per second. Screen tearing may occur at times when selecting 60 on a non-VRR display. So, there it is, and... Just like I said last week, that Fallout 4 update was an indication that Starfield might follow and get a 40 FPS option as well, and here we are. It is now officially confirmed. I really hope this becomes an industry standard. You know, give people the option to play at 40 FPS if they have a 120 hertz display because it's such a great middle ground to have. It's just so much better than 30 FPS and it still gives you similar visuals. Now, I am a little surprised though that Starfield is also getting a 60 FPS option as well. And what that kind of tells me here is that Starfield probably should should have launched day one with this option. While I'm thrilled that it's getting it now, you know, it's better late than never, but it, it would have probably been better if they launched with these options day one when most people played it. That would have been one less thing for people to be upset about. I mean, the good news here, though, is that Bethesda games, you know, tends to have a long shelf life. Still, though, I, I do kind of hope that this is a lesson to Xbox and Bethesda, just like what PC does give fans the option to play with the graphical settings that they prefer. But either which way, this immediately will make Starfield feel like a much better and much more smooth game than what it was. And this is also perfect timing with the release of Shattered Space right around the corner as well. Maybe the combination of the two plus the creation kit as well will bring fans back into its universe yet again. 
Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this video. Do let me know what you all think about all of this. Will you jump back into Starfield once again or not? But until next time, peace out.